गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो हेयर इज माई नेक्स्ट लेक्चर बेस्ड ऑन फ्री स्पेस ऑप्टिक्स कॉम्युनिकेशन एंड द सब्जेक्ट विच आई एम डीलिंग अबाउट दैट इज ऑप्टिकल कॉम्युनिकेशन सो इट्स फॉर बी टेक फिफ्थ सेमेस्टर सब्जेक्ट एंड इट इज ऑल्सो यूज फॉर एम टेक मास्टर्स सो बेसिकली वी डिस्कस हेयर वॉट इज फ्री स्पेस ऑप्टिकल कॉम्युनिकेशन सो नॉर्मली वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन द प्रीवियस फोर लेक्चर्स अबाउट ऑप्टिकल फाइबर कॉम्युनिकेशन so whenever uh, the data is sent from the laser or led which is a widely uh, optical source to the detector we can use a wired medium or a wireless medium so the wired medium we 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 have already discussed that is uh, our optical fiber communication system or optical fiber so in that optical fiber we have already discussed about single mode fiber and multi mode fiber so accordingly we according to the applications we can use our uh, types of fibers here but for uh, wireless transmission we can use free space optical communication so what is basically free space optical communication so if we see here from the diagram that there is a data generator at the transmitter side a modulator and laser driver and then there is a laser or a optical source then there is a free space optical link then there is a detector at the receiver side then there is decoder and demodulator which takes data from the detector and then we have a decision making circuitry and we have a original data so basically free space optical communication uses laser beam in to propagate in free space to transmit data between two points so here the transmitter sends modulated light through the atmosphere and a receiver basically receive this light and send it further for electrical uh, amplification and electrical filtering so as we already discussed about in uh, in optical fiber communication system that we have a data which we can uh, send uh, through the laser with uh, by converting it into a light in the form of light and then it will be sent through optical fiber and the data is uh, received at the other end with the detector and the detector further converts that electrical uh, signal or light signal into electrical form so basically there is a uh, emission of photo current at the detector side so we have here there is a data generator which is a pseudo random generator pseudo random sequence generator so this pseudo random sequence generator generate data in a random fashion then we have a modulator and laser driver which modulate this data accordingly and then it send to the laser so here the laser is basically giving you a message signal and the modulator is a carrier signal or a uh, driver is a carrier signal which modulate this particular signal in the form of uh, light and send through a free space optical link the detector further converts that light into electrical signal and then this electrical signal is further you can amplify this filtering operation we can use all these operation in uh, receiver end so this is all about uh, free space optical communication obviously we have uh, here there is no link there is no uh, wired medium so there are many challenges which occurs in free space optical communication there are so many environmental effects uh, output so we can see further here what are the challenges what are the advantages of free space optical communication how this can be overcome also so here Uh, there is a diagram which shows why free space optics so very narrow and directional beam as we know already that laser has coherent beam and it has a particular line width which is very narrower so in the similar way in the similar fashion as we have discussed in Uh, optical fiber communication we have a laser a detector a optical fiber the beam which is um, uh, output from the laser to the um, uh, fiber is also narrower beam and it's a coherent light so in the similar way we have a laser here and we have a detector here so the light beam is basically falling on the detector so beams only a few meters in diameter at a kilometer allow very close spacing of links without interference no side lobes here highly secure because we cannot retrieve data in between uh, the um, transmitter and the receiver 
एंड सो दैट्स वाई इट इज हाईली सिक्योर एफिशियंट यूज ऑफ एनर्जी रेंजेस ऑफ ट्वेंटी मीटर टू मोर देन एट किलोमीटर पॉसिबल इन विद दिस एफ एस ओ so as we have many advantages of uh, fibers that has a huge bandwidth has no interference electromagnetic interference effects are nil there so but on the other hand if we see about free space optical communication it has also very advantages so beams are only a few meters in diameter set a uh, kilometer it has a very narrower beam we have a coherent system here efficient use of energy highly secured there are no retrieval of uh, uh, data in between so this this is basically a encrypted data so next we will discuss about why free space optics so for deployment behind windows so in large uh, buildings we can deploy a free space optical communication system behind windows rapid installation without trenching and permitting so there is direct connection to the end user so bypasses the building owner no roof sites rights and no riser height right so this these are all we can deploy the system behind the windows and it can be directly uh, falling on the detector so the light from the laser to the detector is on the line of sight communication so here there is a term which is called as line of sight communication so we require this line of sight communication which is necessary basically for free space optical communication system next why free space optics the fso value propositions no interference as we have already discussed there is no electromagnetic interference in the free space optical uh, communication system as we are using here the laser light the unlicensed version the easy to install thing and through the window or from the rooftop so many buildings have the the larger the high uh, high rise buildings we can, we can install this particular system in a very very better way no trenching no permits fiber like data rates in the similar way we have the data rates in the fiber optical fiber cable in the gigahertz range in the same way we have in uh, uh, free space optics in the gigahertz range many deployment options fungible equipments so we have a easy equipment easy installation process only the requirement is line of sight communication between the transmitter and the receiver between the laser and the detector so now we will we are going to discuss the environmental factors obviously we are dealing with uh, the free space that's why there are so many environmental factors which can affect this these particular light which is reaching at the receiver end so we have different environmental challenges like fog window attenuation scintillation obstructions different type of building obstructions range alignment of the building at as the building can cannot be tilted or something so these are all challenges which um, which can affect uh, the light which are passing from the transmitter to the receiver so we have a, some sometimes there is more sunlight sometimes there is less sunlight so these are all, all factors can affect the uh light propagating from the transmitter to the receiver end so now we will discuss uh, one by one these type of challenges in a brief so firstly we have atmospheric attenuation which is basically known as fog so we already discussed about absorption so absorption is a phenomena in which the light is uh, hitting to a dust particle or some um, particles which are in uh, size which is comparable to the size of the light so and in that case there may be a situation that there may be absorption of the um, light with these particles or scattering of light with these particles so absorption or scattering of optical signals to due to the airborne particles primarily fog but can can be it, it can be a rain or a snow or a smoke or dust etc with these particles light hit and they can be the light can be scattered it will not be transmitted part, uh, properly to the uh, receiver end or uh, or to the detector end so uh, which is transmitting from the transmitter to the receiver end so it can result in a complete outage maybe the light will not reach uh, at the detector or maybe some partial light will reach at the detector fso wavelength and fog droplets are close to equal in size so for this particular attenuation or uh, scattering of light you can say uh, there are two types of scattering we have discussed that is first one is the rayleigh scattering and the second one is mie scattering so these two type of scatterings are occur due to the airborne particles uh, which can be hit by a uh, by the light so this uh, particular particle has a size which is equivalent to the size of the wavelength which we are using at the transmitter end so, suppose we are using 1310 nanometer so the particle size should be incomparable with the 1310 nanometer size 
uh, wavelength. Similarly, for mean scattering, we have lambda by 10 factor, which is useful for the size of the, for deciding that there will be a mean scattering or not. So, uh, if the particle size is uh, somehow uh, in, in approximately equal to lambda by 10, then there will be a chances of mean scattering also. So, these two types of scattering will occur in the case of uh, uh, and also in the uh, free space optical communication. So, typically FSO system work 2 to 3x further uh, than the human eye which can be seen. So, high availability deployment requires shorter links that can operate in the fog. So, this is the first type of challenge which is uh, which can be uh, mitigate which can also mitigate the data which is uh, transmitting from the transmitter to or from the laser to the detector end. The second challenge is low clouds, rain, snow and dust. So, these are also challenges like low clouds very similar to the fog, many a company rain and snow. So, rain that is drop sizes larger than fog, wavelength of light extremely heavy rain, can't see through it, can't take a link down. So, there, in that case also there will be a no link uh, settlement or no link establishment between the transmitter or the and the receiver. Heavy snow also cause uh, the mitigation of the uh, data. It may cause ice build up on windows, white out conditions, etc. Because we are deploying uh, the system behind the windows and they may, the heavy snow may cause these type of effects. Stand storms likely only in desert areas, rare in the urban core area. So, these all are challenges which can affect our free space optical communication uh, very widely. So, next uh, challenge is scintillation. So, scintillation is basically beam spreading or wandering due to propagation through air pockets of varying temperature, density and index of refraction. Actually, uh, it has uh, same as mutual uh, uh, fog attenuation. So, it results in increased error rate but not complete outage. So, in th this case when there is a scintillation, there will be some light which is transmitting from the uh, laser to the receiver. It may have some partial light which is receiving or not a complete outage as in the case of the fog and the rain or the snow. So, next we have this graph which is a particularly uh, experimental graph. So, window attenuation. So, uncoated glass attenuates at, at least 4 percent per surface due to reflection. These are some theoretical results. Tinted or insulated windows can have much greater attenuation possible to trade high altitude roof, uh, rooftop weather losses versus window attenuation. So, this is a graph between wavelength and the attenuation which is in dB per loss. So, we can see at lower wavelengths we have higher attenuation and at larger wavelengths we have less attenuation. At some particular wavelength like 1310 nanometer or around 1000 to 1200 nanometer we have very less attenuation or less losses. So, next we have challenges which we can compensate for building motion. Two methods are there. So, first method is automatic pointing and tracking. So, it allows no narrow divergence beam for greater link margin. System is always optimally aligned for maximum link margin and additional cost and complexity is here for uh, due to which the link budget is also increased. Large divergence and failed. So, there, if there is a, a beam spread much higher as expected. So, in that case, beam spread is uh, larger than expected. It reduces a link margin due to reduced energy density and it has low cost. So, here is uh, uh, you can see from the figure that the beam divergence can be much higher. So, in that case, the energy density is much reduced and the co cost is also low. So, these are some methods which can compensate our building motions. There. So, these two methods can be easily used. First one is the automatic pointing and tracking and the second one is the large divergence and field. So, next we have building motion thermal expansion. So, result from settlement. This is also a practical result. 15 percent of buildings move more than 4 uh, milliradians and 5 percent of buildings move more than 6 milliradians. 1 percent of buildings move more than 10 milliradians. So, due to which there may be a chances of not a proper link set, uh, establishment between the laser and the detector. So, thank you so much. We have uh, this uh, last lecture which is based on free space optical communication and apart from this you can study free space optical communication in a um, wider way or in a, in depth according that how the visibility will affect uh, your link and you can calculate the BER that is that is the better rate at the receiver end and uh, according to the data rate as we have already discussed in the fiber that we can increase the data rate beyond uh, 
मेगाहर्ट्स टू गीगा हर्ट्स एंड बट इट विल ऑलवेज कम्स अप विथ अ कंडीशन दैट मे बी देयर विल बी इंक्रीज इन द बी आर सो देयर आर लॉट ऑफ मैथड्स विच वी कैन यूज फॉर रिड्यूसिंग अवर बी आर बेटर रेट एंड वी कैन इस्टेब्लिश अ प्रॉपर लिंक बिटवीन द ट्रांसमीटर एंड द रिसीवर थैंक यू सो मच